Friends, I'm so thankful that we're able to gather together on Christmas Eve in ways that we haven't been able to do for some time. I do need to make a request, as per the regulations of the Bishop of the Diocese of North Carolina, all people are required to wear a mask while they are inside. If you have not brought one with you, don't worry, we have plenty at the door. So, please make sure that you are masked throughout the service. Thank you.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that this light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exalted when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken is on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Today is born our Savior Christ. 
Christ the Lord. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Today in our Savior, who has come now to rule the earth. Rule it in justice, rule it in mercy forever. A reading from Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to, to, Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. The Gospel of the Lord. In the 2005 French uh, film, Joyeux Noël, pardon my French, literally. <laughs> I didn't realize that joke was going to be in there. That's a good one. <laughs> Anyhow, in this film, it depicts the events of the 1914 Christmas Eve truce among the French, the German, and the Scottish forces in several places along the Western Front in World War I. And amid the bomb-scarred trenches, the barbed wire fences, and the makeshift grave, the soldiers, who only hours before had been firing upon one another, miraculously create this moment of peace and joy. Precious gifts from home are shared, chocolate and bread, wine that had been saved for a special occasion. Carols are sung, soccer is played. And in the film, a priest, who is also a stretcher bearer, reflects on a mass that he had celebrated for the various national troops together. He says, tonight these men were drawn to that altar like it was a fire in the middle of winter. Even those who aren't devout came to warm themselves, maybe just to be together, maybe to forget about the war to which his commanding officer responds, maybe, but the war won't forget about us. The officer's response points to how painfully obvious it must have been to all those who were involved that the peace that had emerged in their midst, that they had nourished with charity and with affection, could not withstand the forces from without. The might and determination of the nations at war would squash whatever hope that they had experienced. And the war did continue 
for four more excruciating years. However, in the midst of such darkness, a light had shone. The light did not overcome the darkness and end the war swiftly, but those who had seen it were surely changed. They had experienced what could be. They had seen the lie behind the enmity enmity that their own countries had taught them to have one for another. And in that moment, they saw clearly a common humanity. The peace had broken into their midst and had seeped into their souls, changing how they perceived one another and perhaps how they saw the world. Isaiah writes to a people similarly trapped in darkness, having known expulsion from their own homeland, years of exile, and one vicious warlord after another. The prophet tells the people to take heart, for born to them is an heir to the throne who will reverse their misfortunes. Peace, it seems, will not come from the powerful. It cannot be imposed from above, even by the most successful of rulers. Peace grows from literal and figurative infancy. It isn't the mighty kings who are Israel's hope, but a baby. And the same is true for us today. We remember this evening the homely, lowly, unremarkable event of a child's birth in humble surroundings. During the reign of an emperor who was lauded as a god, one who had brought virtual peace to the empire, the true sapling of peace emerges from that Judean soil in that tiny child there betwixt the ox and ass. Peace cannot be imposed from above. Peace on earth and goodwill among people began with the seed of Jesus' birth. Not with power, but with vulnerability. Through his resilience, even when attacked, even when put to death, a lasting peace is being built, seeping up and through us despite the world's best efforts to try to tamp it back down. It bubbled to the surface on that Christmas Eve in 1914 on the Western Front, and it bubbles to the surface here this afternoon. Peace is coming. The kingdom of God is breaking in. It may be a slow process. It may not be fast enough for us. But peace is increasing despite what our experiences show us to the contrary. Isaiah says, his authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace. I heard a piece on the radio about change arising where no one thought change would be possible. It began by asking people on the street whether or not they thought there would ever be an end to war. And the hosts of the show were understandably dismayed by the responses that they got. The vast majority of people thought that war would not end because, and this is the especially distressing part, because... The struggle for power and for dominance 
was just part of human nature, they said. And so the producers of this program wanted to find out if that was really true. And so then, following that, there was this fascinating piece about these scientific experiments, some of which have been going on for well over 50 years now, on the evolution of certain species from aggressors to non-aggressors. Over time, it seems that violence is being bred out of these animals. For some, it's a change in circumstances that precipitates the change. For others, a more forceful weeding out of the violent from the non-violent has the same effect. The argument then was made that the same very well could be true for humans. It could be that humanity is slowly, incrementally, at a painstaking pace, becoming less violent. And when I heard this, I immediately thought about the Isaiah passage where he talks about beating swords into plowshares. The prophet writes, they will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. The scriptures tell us that there will be an end to violence. Jesus' own resurrection shows us that violence ultimately cannot hold God. Jesus allows his own crucifixion and rising from the grave proves that sin, that violence, that hate have been defeated. Now, they may have been defeated, but they are far from gone in the world in which you and I inhabit today. And so we need Christmas Eve. We need this commemoration to remind us of the peace of God amid so many swords that are still glinting in the sunlight, nowhere close to the peaceable purposes of tending the earth, but rather yielded in an attempt to control it. Isaiah counseled his audience to hold out for the real thing, to not put their trust in fleeting rulers whose peace could never be true and lasting. They were to wait for the one who would reestablish the throne of David and who would rule with justice and righteousness forever. But why would they wait? How could they, in the midst of such misery, how could they wait for peace based on justice? One commentator answers, because they have seen a great light. They then know what is possible. And remembering the life, death, and resurrection that awaited the little one, we too know what can be. The commentator continues that there are many of us who also live in darkness. In the United States, during the first decade of the 21st century, there are those who argue that we too are surrounded by enemies at every turn. They are all around us, ready to destroy us, our cherished institutions and our way of life. In the face of fear, even terror, it is tempting to put our trust in the powerful, those who, seeking their own interests, promise to protect us. Yet Isaiah calls his listeners and us today to hold on for the real thing, for the one who will rule with power peace and with equity. And so 
Today, tonight, tomorrow, we celebrate the birth of the real thing. We rejoice that a way has been made for us. God's dream for humanity, living in peace with one another and with God, is becoming the reality. Slowly, but surely. The angel's proclamation to the shepherds then is true for us today. Today is born a savior, the Messiah. He is the prince of peace. Peace, that's a word we need to hear as much as those soldiers did in World War I. May our eyes and our ears and our hearts, like theirs, be prepared to recognize the marvelous peace of God as it seeps to the surface. And may we, like them, be emboldened to nurture it and bring it to fruition, even if only for an instant. God's peace is slowly but surely reconciling all that is to God. And for that good news, we can most certainly sing joy to the world. standing and affirming our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. Sisters and brothers, confident in the word made flesh and dwelling among us, let us bring our loving God the petitions of our hearts this Christmas Eve, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For the community of believers throughout the world, especially those in positions of leadership and authority, that they might direct us towards the service of God's glory and the spread of God's light to the ends of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. For the church gathered here this Christmas Eve, that our worship of the word made flesh might take on flesh in our living the gospel message, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all refugees and for the victims of war, violence, and injustice, that they may know the blessing of the Prince of Peace, let us pray to the Lord. 
for our sisters and brothers in any need, especially those on our parish prayer list and those we name at this time aloud or in our hearts. That they may know the healing power of God's love, let us pray to the Lord. For all who dwell in the darkness, that they may know the light of Christ on this day and in this season, let us pray to the Lord. For those newly born and for those celebrating birthdays this week, that as they grow in years, they may also grow in grace, let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, and especially for all those we love but see no longer, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and that we may share with all your saints in God's eternal kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, child of Mary, born in the stable at Bethlehem, receive these our prayers and be born in us anew, that the world may know the wonder of your love. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Friends, I am tremendously grateful that we are gathered together in this way, on this occasion. It is a real joy and a real privilege after two years for us to be back in Christmas at Holy Trinity. I expected applause. Uh, I am grateful for those who are visiting with us, for those who are returning for the first time tonight, for those who have been coming in person all year and sitting outside in the cold last year under the space eaters, for those who are at home watching on YouTube, I am thankful, grateful for all of you and for what you mean to this place. I will give you a bit of instruction today on communion. And so because we are masking, as has been our, cons our process throughout all of uh, the COVID pandemic, we only receive communion in one kind, only in the bread. But we are inviting folks to the altar rail. And so here's the twist. You come forward to the altar rail, you kneel with your mask on and receive the bread. Once you stand and start walking back to your seat, then you lift your mask slightly and consume the rail. That keeps us from being right next to each other with our masks off. So we are here together and know that there are plenty of places that have canceled so just follow the rules, and we can stay here. It's up to you. It's like forest fires. Only you can prevent the spread of COVID. I am so thankful for um, my own first experience of what the search committee promised me it would be like here. Uh, and so I came during COVID and the closure. And y'all, let's do this every week, okay? Okay. That sounds like a plan. Okay, but only you can make that possible. Ascribe to the Lord, speaking of, the honor to his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual May Christ, our infant Savior, give you the joy of the Bethlehem shepherds, the awe of the worshiping sages, and the humility and love of the Holy Family. May you become as little children. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. 
Amen. Amen. Rejoice, fear not, the Lord is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.